This is East Coast DNA. I'm your host, Darcy Walsh, and today's guest today we have Zwerg. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So uh, right away, I'm sure anyone that's uh, watching us in any of the visual mediums for the show with the full video, they uh, can see that you have a different look right off the bat. Yes, we're shooting a new video tomorrow for Gerodactyl. And uh, my brother is, it's, it's about my brother, Jared Betts. He's DJ Gerodactyl. And he um, is also known as, oh yeah, DJ Gerodactyl for his goth nights that he holds in Atlantic Canada. And the style of music that he plays, he's enamored with goth wave and dark wave, synth wave, new wave, lots of waves. So the sound for the song, I wanted it to be um, early 80s new wave, synth wave. And I try to make a character for each song. And this this character is the new wave water weirdo because my brother is also obsessed with um, crustaceans and all the creatures under the sea. He is the painter of the world's giant, the, the world's largest lobster in Shediac, New Brunswick. Awesome. He's an abstract painter. Yeah. So that's why there's all kinds of like paint splatter and jellyfish and fins and spines and, Crazy and stuff. The, the outfits are something you design yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of time and uh, thought put into them. I I did uh, see quite a few of the different variations that you've done over the last few years too. Looking online. So yeah. is that something? I well, here, let's go way back. Like I uh, had mentioned to you here, I, I I did do a little bit of research, so I had a few little notes. So uh, we could take it whatever direction you want, but if we go way back to your parents, uh -huh. I did read that your parents came from artistic backgrounds as well. So yeah. I think I read that your father maybe was a musician and your mother was an artist, but I think yeah. I also picked up in some interview segments. Was your mother also like a tour manager? Yeah, yeah. She managed a Christian rock band in the late 80s. And the last single we put out was a song for her. It was called Prize of the Hudson. She grew up along the Hudson River in New York. And uh, it it was late 80s and that was her heyday as rock and rolling so we went with kind of like a deaf leopard sound and um the, the late 80s hair the whole album the album by the way is called the centurion and it's a retrospective of uh musical pop music throughout the 20th century so we start at y2k and we go all the way back to the turn of the century with an irish folk ballad and so for this new album too, like I realize you've been in the game for quite a while and you have an extensive discography already to your name, but with the new album, it does seem like there's a lot more with the outfits and the visual aspect. Like it, you can see it that you've grown over the years into that, but yeah. You're, you're at an extreme level now with the costumes and everything, but I also see that as far as what you're doing on the more music side to go with that for collaboration, like you've also signed with M. Griner's record label as well. So is this uh, all working together? Is this a vision that you had from the get-go for the Centurion? Yeah, Um I knew that I wanted a character for each song and from each different era. And in the album artwork, when it comes out, the um, my friend Jason Ogden um, in St. John, he did an incredible job on the artwork. And the, the visual has always been just as important to me as the sonic. So anyway, um, with regards to M, I love that lady. She's just so, and I love her. I've always loved her music so much. I've been sending her my stuff for years and years and years. But this 
this record um well what happened was she wanted to know if i sewed because she liked one of my looks that i did and uh she was wanting to know if i could sew up this she's half filipina a filipina kind of top for her and i was a little reticent because i didn't have her here i'm in new brunswick she's in ontario and I wouldn't be able to fit her. So I said, well, I'd love to do something for you. So why don't you send me a jacket or a shirt that we know fits you really well. And um, uh, you can send it here and I'll add all the embellishments and stuff and send it back. So we were talking back and forth about the, the piece a lot. And in the meantime, I was mastering this album and I asked her if, uh, if I could hire her just to listen to some of the masters and get her take on the EQ and, uh, you know, because how it is when you listen to everything a thousand times, you kind of lose those fresh ears. And she had fresh ears that I trusted. So she said, yeah, sure. So I hired her to do that. And she just fell in love with the album, which is really exciting for me. So Dead Daisy was always the label that I wanted to be on. So pretty lucky. Yeah, it was funny for myself researching. Like I could I saw that immediately once I saw the video. But also knowing that she played with Bowie and in your yeah. your early looks where you were playing with the visual aspects, you could see the Bowie influence there for sure. Yeah. And, you know, that wasn't a conscious choice, but people would, would always say that. And uh, and I, 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 I'm ashamed that I didn't know his his catalog, really. I mean, I'd heard a couple things, but. Uh, yeah. And now. I mean, he's he was incredible. He was incredible. So I I, I welcome that comparison. It's very flattering. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And now the early part of your music career, like in the earlier part of the two thousands, what it would be like two thousand six to two thousand nine era, you were starting off for music. I started that... Zwerg in ninety six. So... Oh, ninety six. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Even further back. So that didn't have the theatrical element to it at the time? No. Um, well, I was always a pretty eccentric guy, but I was really into the local post-grunge kind of stuff, like mm -hmm. LVL, Eric Strip. So my first couple of releases I did with Rick White. Okay. Uh, it was kind of like lo-fi piano garage music. So... Uh, just one mic with my parents upright piano and then his grungy guitars and he did all the other instrumentation and that stuff actually did pretty well I kind of lost my way after that I think um, Leora Kornfeld at CBC Vancouver would play, play it on Radio Sonic all, all the time and Brave New Waves in Montreal played it all the time so it got lots of national airplay and then after that, I was like, no, it's just so me. Like, instead of sticking something with something that's working, I'm like, no, I'm going to go do this direction now. <laughs> so I, I did this kind of like retro synth pop before it was uh, repopularized. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of people didn't understand it. And I kind of lost my way for a while. So what was the inspiration for revisiting it and like you do have as you already kind of alluded to like there's it's a concept album where you kind of have a theme going through each song yeah, yeah. so was this a conscious revisiting of the musical element or is this just a natural organic growth of where you've always been going with it in the first place oh i'll tell you where that idea came about well People who hear me play the piano know that Tori Amos is my favorite piano player. So uh, her album Scarlet's Walk was going to come out. And I was acting in Toronto at the time. And I was reading about this new album that was going to come out. And the way the article made it sound, it sounded like it was going to be a musical retrospective through American pop music. I thought, oh, that's brilliant. I can't wait to hear it. So when it came out and it wasn't that, uh, it was amazing. One of my favorite records ever. I thought, oh, I'm going to keep that idea and do that sometime. And I started working with her string arranger, John Philip Chanel. And he produced my last album. We did like a piano dance record. And I thought, okay, well, he's a music historian. He does all these brass string arrangements. Everything. He is the guy for this record. So 
halfway through the record when we get back to, I think he started on the 50s, um, 50s all, all the way back to the turn of the century. Uh, he did the arrangements and just some incredible stuff. I can't wait for it to come out. But the record's very diverse. It's it. But I think the concept holds it all together. And you do have a lot of different uh, connections. Like if I go through all the notes, I mean, we'd probably need a three or four episodes to cover all the different people that you've been collaborating with. With all those connections and the fact that you have an acting career as well and you've been in different cities, I know you spent several years in Toronto as well. What brings you back to the East Coast? Um, well... What happened was in 2006, I decided I wanted a break from auditioning and I was going to go teach uh, English in Iceland. So I took a, a TESL course in Halifax, but then I found out I was going to be an uncle. So I okay. wasn't going anywhere. So that's why I stayed. And then a couple of years after that, I met my boyfriend and I wasn't going anywhere then either. So, and he's from Miramichi. So we have oh, this perfect. beautiful cabin here north of Miramichi uh, together. And we've been together since 2009. Wow. So, yep. Well, congratulations on that. But I, yeah. I do like to hear, I mean, that's mostly what people do say, people that have left and came back. It's... Yeah harder in some ways to continue an arts career on the east coast of canada but i do find the 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 family roots is what pulls a lot of people back besides the fact that it's a beautiful region oh yeah yeah it's it's i mean there aren't many opportunities here really unless you really get in with some of those clicks i hate to say it <laughs> but um uh, uh it's wonderful here for a creative project here mm -hmm. in the woods it's just so small and yeah can't beat that and so with this new video that you're doing you'll be filming that obviously in the local area yeah Shediac actually and the director cinematographer is Tyler Warren Ellis and he does all of James Mullinger's stuff and uh, he's fantastic. And we're going to go to the giant lobster where, that my brother paints and shoot in front of that and then shoot in front of some. He did some butterflies, some permanent pieces at the waterfront in Moncton. Um, so we'll do some shots there, too, and uh, maybe some other murals that he's done. Oh, I, I, I love the thematic part, but like not just the theater part, but the thematic part of being able to tie all that stuff together and that there's a backstory behind it. it's kind of like when someone gets a tattoo and they either pick yeah. something out of a book that's just a standard one or they're like you know i want a tattoo that's kind of this because it means right. this to me like it's nice to see that the thought in behind all of the artistic elements is there and that there is meaning exactly do you get much feedback like interaction from your fan base because i i would assume that based on your location probably a lot of your fan base would be online that you'd be interacting with them yeah yeah uh i've always been pretty reclusive so i don't really have a big fan base <laughs> but mm -hmm. M's helping me with that because admittedly i said we're look i'm not good at i'm not good with technology <laughs> And I'm not good at self-promotion, <laughs> but she's great with both of those. So mm -hmm. she's helping, trying to help me hit Spotify. So Perfect. I'm trying to trying to build that up right now. But um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, well, must not have been important. <laughs> oh, I did see on Spotify the probably one of the most viewed ones was a, a cover of a winter sleep song as well. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, that's a popular one. And. The other one was Lester the Lobster got on a lot of the kids' compilations. Oh, yes. I could see that. And so what about live performances where you, you have such a visual element to it? Uh, I know you have done performances in the past, but do you have a plan in the future to be doing some type of tour element or some events? I'd love to. 
I, uh, I just started rehearsing again. I'd been kind of in production mode for a couple of years. And then mm -hmm. with COVID, there wasn't much, but, but um, yeah, I really love playing live and I miss it so much. And now I've been contacting some of the restaurants I used to play at and hotels and stuff, and it's all different managers. Right. So <laughs> kind of get my way in there again somehow. But um, yeah, next year I want to hit like pride events and stuff. I think they would get the the drag element. Yes. And that was another thing I wanted to ask you. I, I do know that you do the songs yourself, but you also do it with full band as well. Yeah. And as I mentioned, there's a, a lot of different people that you've been collaborating with. Uh, John Mullane, I want to mention because his he, his name pops up like every other episode. So I, I feel like I have to mention him. Johnny, he's awesome. We went to Moncton High together. Okay. I was in his Smashing Pumpkins cover band for one day. I think because I looked like Darcy. Yes. I, I was the bassist. But then I think we were supposed to play at a coffee house and I had a math test. And I was, wasn't doing very well in math. So I didn't play. And then I think I was kicked out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, John is awesome. And I love his mantra of any song that he works on, he works on it as if it were his own. Yes. He takes care with it and he always gives a, an amazing product. So he's a great guy. Yeah, it's it's been all uh, good words about him all the way around every time he's referenced on here. Sure. Now, you had mentioned uh, like as far as like a drag element to it or at least being parallel to with your Spotify discography, I do see that you've released instrumental versions of almost every one of your songs if not all of them yeah so is the purpose behind that is there an audience out there that will sing over top of it or is it just for to have the instrumental version i do know that you also released like some lip syncing clip from your last video with m there of your own lip syncing pieces <laughs> before the video so it, is there some drag elements that tie in with performance wise and is there something behind the instrumentals as far as the purpose or of the audience that you expect to have for that type of thing? Well, originally the idea was for, um, for soundtracks for film and TV. Mm -hmm. now, sometimes they, sometimes the, lyrics as you know can probably deter them from picking your song for a certain scene <laughs> but maybe the music is right right so and then and then m was happy to see that i do that she suggested that i always do that too and the mastering house i work with um alan douches in uh new windsor new york where which is actually where my grandmother was born um he's fantastic and and he always uh adds in the instrumental versions for me so oh perfect so, so it, it, it for uh soundtracks tom fitzgerald has been using a lot of songs so i'm very grateful to him for that awesome and you've had a lot of nominations over the years and like i said you have the a good full discography so going forward when is the centurion full album actually coming out well, I'll have to talk about that with them because I'm kind of enjoying putting a single out at a time. Um, you do music too, right? I don't. I hang around a lot of musicians, thankfully. Uh, so I, I, I live vicariously through hundreds of other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so different now, isn't it? It's it how gets, it's weird. It's 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 weird B being behind the curtain a little bit too. It it is there's stuff that you can tell from either side, but yeah. for people that are trying to live off of this type of thing or really trying to make a go of a vision that they have, it it is really interesting the differences for different perspectives of what success is and is not. Right. Yeah, because um, Em was saying, um, she was explaining to me now the cycle of a record is kind of the opposite of what it used to be you'd put the record out and then put the singles out and now 
people put the singles out and kind of get people warmed up to the album and then you can put the album out much later if you want mm -hmm. um so i'm not sure i the the, the concept is to put out a, a single with a video for each song okay and maybe them out at the end but that'll take quite a while so i'm not sure I'm not sure on that one yet and, and well speaking to that too you already do have what is there half a dozen already or does this new one make half a dozen yeah this is the fifth one yeah okay so you're you're already making your way through the track listing pretty quickly yeah maybe uh an ep somewhere in the middle as a as a teaser to what the full album's going to be yeah that's that's a good idea that's yeah that's a good idea that's probably something that i've noticed uh especially with the nova scotia bands that i've been following it seems like three or four singles and then an ep and the other rotation yeah some so, of the younger bands that i like now i doing that yes and you must find too like you uh mentioned some of your early influences being that like kind of 90s sound that we had all around this region so are you as we're the same age so are you finding that some of these newer bands sound a lot like the bands that we were listening to in high school? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's some new trends too. Like, uh, what do you think of cursive singing? I haven't gotten into that. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. There, there's, there's a few different ones. What? There's a few different ones. Have you run into that there? Like in your area? Yeah, it's such a trend. Um, but then I'm thinking, when I was a teenager, the older generation said, I hate that. <laughs> so I'm just turning into an old curmudgeon. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it happens eventually. <laughs> no, I respect it. Yes, absolutely. Just... That's what I like doing here with this podcast is to be able to show a little bit of everything that's out there. Yeah. That's great. It's a, it's a respect and celebration for all of the arts. Absolutely. That's the way to be. And I, I do have a newfound respect for trends because they do help chronicle time. Oh, like absolutely. We wouldn't have the 40s look or we wouldn't have the sound of the 20s or it's all based on trends. So I have to be uh, respectful of trends. Yeah, you're, you're uh, gaining wisdom. As yeah. the years pass by. <laughs> yeah. But we're not aging. We're just gaining wisdom. Exactly. Like I said, we're the same age, so you can't be aging any more than I am. So we're we're, we're locked in for a while. Yeah. What month are you? January. So I'm 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 months ahead of you. Okay. Yeah, I'm October. So uh coming up for you this fall. I know that uh, Music New Brunswick has their awards and everything in the October time frame as well. And it's your birthday month. Do you have any big events or anything planned for October? I just contacted them to see if it's too late to apply to play. And they said it was. Oh, no. But, yeah. But uh, that's OK. I'll just get on the ball now. Yeah. Not too late to visit and uh, make the late. rounds, do some networking there for sure. Exactly. Well, I'm actually planning on uh, visiting there this year myself, too. So if you're floating around on site, be uh, sure to stop by and say hi. I may not immediately recognize you without the outfits on. <laughs> but I'll look for the triangle motif because you, you always seem to work a triangle in at yes. some point. On my forehead. Is that, does that have a, a meaning behind it or it's just something that you did early on and stuck with? Well, I liked the look initially, and then I realized, well, triangle is a gay symbol. And all my life, I was so ashamed of it. Uh, now I'm not anymore. So I wear it very proudly on my forehead now. Awesome. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. So at the end of these episodes, we usually uh, play a single from the artist. Uh, typically, it's the latest single, but I always let the artist select the song. And I realized in your particular case, your latest single is a matter of perspective because you just had one out. You have one 
that you're doing a video for right now. So yep. is there something that you would uh, like to play out with for people to get a taste of what it is you're doing? Yeah. Um, let's do Gerodactyl the one we're shooting tomorrow. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, I'm going to keep an eye for that video to come out. I recommend everyone uh, check out the last video with prize of the Hudson. Yep. Yep. Before I let you go, is that a play on the Hudson prize? Oh, I never thought of that till just now. Use that next interview. Well, you can, you can lie and say that, that, that it was on purpose. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. All right. Well, thanks again for your time. And we'll be keeping an eye on what you have going on uh, in the future. And we'll uh, put a link down below to your homepage so people can be sure to get all the links to all your latest and greatest. Thank you so much. And we'll play out now. Anyone uh, new to East Coast DNA, be sure to hit subscribe and we'll have uh, plenty of new interviews coming up in the next couple months. Thanks again. Bye.